so let's start with today's session by looking at the different form of energies okay let me say you something about work and energy that energy is something which is not a measurable quantity if you want to measure energy you have to measure it in terms of the capacity to do work okay so my energy is a non measurable quantity where whereas work is a measurable quantity okay so if i want to find out that how much energy an xyz object is possessing if i want to find it out so i will find it out in terms of how much work that object is doing the amount of work that object can do is equal to the amount of energy that object is possessing now let's start with the wait a minute can you see this power point beta wait a minute yes sir wait a minute because i doubt i am So let's start with this. So what we are going to do today, we are going to talk about, we are going to discuss about different forms of energy. Okay. So write down the heading, different forms of energy. Okay. This is the section B part of our chapter, different forms of energy. Okay. So we start with the first that is mechanical energy and its forms so let's first start our discussion with defining what is mechanical energy so the energy possessed by the body due to its state of rest or of motion is called mechanical energy so if you try to understand it you will come to know that it is the energy which an object possesses due to its state of rest try to understand these are the two things due to the state of rest or due to the state of motion so the energy the object is possessing due to the state of rest or due to the state of motion is called the mechanical energy it is or it is in two forms okay now please all of you keep on writing this as i am telling you okay because otherwise i cannot give you extra time to write it okay so keep on writing all this as i am explaining so the energy possessed by the body due to state of rest or of motion is called mechanical energy it is in two forms okay so mechanical energy is in two forms so which are they the first is our potential energy and then we have kinetic energy so if you simplify mechanical energy mechanical energy is classified into two the first is potential energy and the second is kinetic energy remember the energy possessed by the body due to the state of rest means if the object is not moving it is only due to the state of its rest then the object may possess potential energy and if the object is in motion then the energy what it possesses is called as kinetic energy let's start with potential energy first what is potential energy so potential energy is first of all understand it is always represented by the symbol capital u this is how we represent potential energy now the energy possessed by the body at rest if the body is at rest or the energy possessed by the body due to its change shape or size is called potential energy 
energy. So if the object is at rest, it may possess potential energy or if you change the shape or size, if you change the shape or size of an object, then also it may possess potential energy. So the energy possessed by a body at rest or the energy possessed by a body due to its change shape or size is called its potential energy so this is the energy which the object possesses either if the object is at rest or if you deform the object if you change the shape or size of the object then in that case also it possesses energy and the energy possessed by that object due to its deformed shape or size then that energy is also potential energy that's why you will find that the potential energy is also classified into two forms okay which is that the first one is gravitational potential energy and the second one is elastic potential energy so if you look at this chart a little more carefully now it has become mechanical energy mechanical energy is classified into two potential energy and kinetic energy but if you look at the chart again the potential is also classified into two which is the first one gravitational potential energy and the second is elastic potential energy now we start our discussion with gravitational potential energy so the potential energy possessed by a body due to the force of attraction of earth is called its gravitational potential energy means generally this is what we can figure out as rest so the potential energy possessed by the body due to the force of attraction of earth on it is called as gravitational potential energy we know all the objects on the surface of the earth is being attracted towards the earth so the energy which is possessed by a body due to this force of attraction of the earth is called its gravitational potential energy and then we have elastic potential energy in short form you can write epe gpe and epe g for gravitational potential energy epe is for elastic potential energy so the potential energy possessed by a body in the deformed state due to the change in its size and shape is called elastic potential energy so this is elastic potential energy is nothing but it is the energy which an object is possessing in the deformed state okay in the normal state the object will not possess elastic potential energy if you deform the object then it also has a capacity to do work because in the deformed state it possesses energy energy is stored in it okay so due to the change in the shape or size is called elastic potential energy like if i have a bow okay so if you take a bow in a normal condition the bow is not having any energy in it but when we stretch a bow exactly when you stretch a bow what happens the shape is little bit deformed so now this bow is possessing elastic potential energy exactly when you deform the shape of a bow so then in that case the bow is possessing elastic potential energy or in other words if you are having a catapult you know catapult so if you are having a catapult and when you when the catapult is in the normal condition then it is having it is having no elastic potential energy but if you want to throw something then what we do we put that stone or some object there and then what we do we stretch it and the moment we stretch it we deform it its shape and size is being change and then in that deformed state it is possessing energy how much energy uh, which energy it is possessing it's possessing elastic potential energy i hope you are getting it class please type yes if you are getting it or you can also write your queries in the chat okay all of you getting it okay chalo so no problem you all are understanding it very good very good well keep on interacting beta okay just don't be a mute listener okay you keep on typing your doubts typing your queries in the chat okay
Now we'll start with gravitational potential energy. Now we will try to understand that how to find out the gravitational potential energy. So let's let a body of mass M be lifted from the ground on the earth surface from the ground means the earth surface to a vertical height h to a vertical height yes beta harshu every day i am going to do this all of you listen harshu is asking sir would you post this ppt on the google classroom beta there is no need to post this ppt okay i am going to post this entire presentation on the google classroom okay so automatically you will find out all these things in it. Okay, beta. So you obviously this all will be whenever you will play it again on the Google Classroom, you will fi you will find all this. But I will suggest you, okay, that don't uh, don't uh, assume that chalo when it will be uploaded on the Google Classroom, then we will make the notes of it. Right now, all of you, it's a request. Right now, make a note of it. Do it simultaneously. Okay, the moment you are busy, you know you will understand more. You be little busy in writing and then try to understand. And if you have any doubt, please ask. So let's understand that how, how, what is the mathematical way to calculate the gravitational potential energy. So let a body of mass M be lifted from the ground to the on the Earth's surface to a vertical height H. The force required to lift the body is equal to the force of gravity. Okay, so let, let's uh, draw a diagram for the same. Let's draw the diagram for the same. Yes, but you have to write all those notes. But I told you in the beginning itself, beta bhakti. I told this in the beginning that you have to write all this, whatever the presentation, what's the, whatever is shown today in the presentation. Please make a note of it. Okay. If you are not made it, start making it now. Okay. So let's take this object. This is the object. This is the object, okay, and this object is, this is the ground surface, okay, this is a, and this object is at a height h. What is this? This is the height h from the earth surface. The mass of this object is m. What's the mass of the object? m. So mass is equal to m, height is equal to h. Okay, and the acceleration due to gravity is also there. Okay, now this is the object at a height h. So this is my height. So it is at a height above the earth surface. This is the earth surface. Okay. So let a body of mass M be lifted. So you have lifted this object from the ground, which is on uh, means ground means earth surface to a vertical height H. So we have lifted it up to a vertical height H. Now, how much is the force required to lift the body is equal to the force of gravity. How much is the force required is equal to the weight of this object. And how much is the weight of this object? It is equal to the mass into acceleration due to Gravity. So how much is the force required? It is equal to the force required is equal to its mass into acceleration due to gravity. This is the amount of force required. Now try to understand how to calculate. So the work done on the body in lifting it to height h. So how much is the work done? We will find out how much is the work done in lifting this object to a height h. Okay. Now how much is the energy it will possess? So the energy it will possess, this object will possess, will be equal to the amount of work done on lifting it to that place. Understand? So simple relation. If you want to find out how much is the work done, it's very simple. You just find out, sorry, you are, if you want to find out how much is the energy that object is possessing at a height h above the earth's surface, what you have to do? You have to find out how much is the work done in lifting that object to that particular height. The amount of work done, listen, I am repeating it. The amount of work done in lifting that object to that particular position 
is equal to the energy that object is possessing. So first of all, we will do how much is the work done. Okay, so the work done will be work done will be the F into force into displacement. Now force is of the force of gravity and displacement. Okay, so how much is the work done? Work done is mgh. Okay, so how much will be the energy possessed then? This work done in lifting the body up and it is get stored in the body in the form of gravitational potential energy when it is at a height h. So the amount of work done is so simple. The amount of work done is equal to the amount of gravitational potential energy that object is possessing. Okay, is equal to the gravitational potential energy that object is possessing. So ultimately find out the relation that my gravitational, the formula for gravitational potential energy is mgh. What's the formula to find out? What is the gravitational potential energy? It is mgh. From where we get this mgh beta? Understand. The force of gravity is equal to the weight. That is equal to mg. Exactly. That is equal to mg. And the displacement is h. This is the displacement and the height is the h. So how much is the work done? To lift that object to that height, it is equal to mgh. So the amount of work done is equal to the gravitational potential energy which is stored in that object. So if you want to find out the gravitational potential energy of any object, then it's very simple. What do you have to do? You have to simply find out its mass, G and H. You multiply these three factors and you will find out how much is the gravitational potential energy that object is possessing. Clear? I hope you have copied this. So let's start with the next topic then. Have you copied this all? Chalo, very good. Now, we are talking about kinetic energy. But before starting with kinetic energy, I want to say something about elastic potential energy because i have not mentioned about elastic potential energy in the presentation okay now as an object is possessing elastic potential energy okay so then how much is the elastic potential energy that object possesses so you want to find out how much is the elastic potential energy that object is possessing so if you want to find out how much is the elastic potential energy that object is possessing you have to find out how much is the amount of work done on that object to deform it. Exactly. What you have to do? You have to find out how much is the work done on that object to deform it. So the amount of work done on that object to deform it is equal to the elastic potential energy stored in that object. For example, I will take my previous example only, the bow. In a normal state, it is not having any elastic potential energy. But now, what I did, I stretched the bow. Exactly. So whenever I will stretch the bow, I have to do some work on the bow. Because what I am doing, I am applying the force. And I am, by the application of the force, the, there is a displacement in the bow. Exactly. Because the string of it is getting displaced from its normal position. So you will find that by the application of the force, the, there is a displacement in the bow. The string gets displaced. So you want to find out how much is the elastic potential energy? You have to find out how much is the force you are applying into how much is the displacement. In it. So that much force into displacement is the amount of work done. And the amount of work done to deform that object is equal to the elastic potential energy that object is possessing. Okay, so we don't have any formula to calculate that. Okay, but you can easily find it out by understanding 
that okay how much is the elastic potential energy a deformed object is possessing so the elastic potential energy a deformed object is possessing is equal is equal to the amount of work done on it and the amount of work done is equal to force into displacement the same way catapult okay so if you have a normal catapult means it's not been stretched so it is having no elastic potential energy now you put a stone at one end of it and you stretch it now how much is the energy it is possessing now so the energy the catapult is possessing the elastic potential energy the catapult is possessing when you stretch it is equal to the amount of work done so now we'll start with kinetic energy now the energy which is possessed by a body due to its state of motion the energy possessed by a body due to its state of motion is called the kinetic energy so this is nothing but it is the energy possessed by a body due to its state of motion is called the kinetic energy okay you remember what is potential energy the energy possessed by the body due to the state of rest this is the amount of energy possessed by the body due to the state of motion how we represent kinetic energy we represent kinetic energy by the symbol k potential energy is generally represented by the symbol u now understand we are we are still going to follow the same philosophy okay i want to find out how much is the kinetic energy an object is possessing at any instant okay so what i have will do i will follow the same concept what is that that how much is the amount of work done by that object see the potential the kinetic energy possessed by a moving body is equal to the amount of work which the moving body can do before coming to rest so this is how we are going to calculate it okay how we are going to do it we are going to calculate it by how much is the amount of energy that object is possessing so oh, i'm so sorry we will, we are going to find it by the kinetic energy possessed by the moving body is equal to so we are going to find it out that how much is the amount of work amount of work which the moving body can do before coming to rest so you will again find we are equating we are finding kinetic energy in terms of the capacity to do work okay so assume an object is there and that object is in motion so we say that this object this moving object is having kinetic energy this moving object is having kinetic energy okay so now this moving object is having kinetic energy so how much is the kinetic energy that moving object is possessing you want to find out how much is the kinetic energy this moving object possesses so if you want to find out how much is the kinetic energy this moving object possesses what do you have to do it's very simple you find out how much is the amount of work this moving object can do before coming to rest so the amount of work that moving object can do before coming to rest is the amount of kinetic energy it is possessing that's a very simple relation okay so we have to find out how much is the amount of work can the moving object do now i am saying before coming to rest what will happen when the object will come to rest the moment the object will come to rest the amount of uh, sorry the amount of kinetic energy it possess will be zero okay because now the object is at rest so let's have the derivation of this now it can be calculated so how we are going to calculate it can be calculated by the amount of work done by the opposing force to stop it now see the object is moving and as the object is moving i i want the object to stop yes or no before coming to rest so the moving object has to be stopped so what we will do we will apply a force on that object on that moving object let me show you because i am talking little theoretical 
So I will just show you with a small diagram. Okay, now assume this is the moving object. This is a ball or this is something X, Y, Z. This is a moving object. Okay. Now this is a moving object. It is having some velocity. It's a moving object. Okay. It's a moving object. Okay. Now in which direction it is moving? Okay. So you can figure out now in which direction it is moving. So right now it is in motion. So it possesses kinetic energy. Now I want to find out how much is the kinetic energy this object, this moving object is possessing. So I will find out how much is the amount of work done by this moving object before coming to rest. So what I will do, I want to find out how much is the work done. So I will do one thing. I will up calculate the amount of work done by the opposing force to stop it. So I will apply a force on this object. In which direction? In the opposite direction to its motion. Exactly. What I am doing? I am applying a force on this object. In which direction? In the opposite direction to its motion. So the object is moving in this direction. The force is applied in the opposite direction. What will happen due to the application of this force? Due to the application of this force, you will find that this object will travel some distance. What will happen? It will stop. Yes, because when we apply the force, the object will stop. But understand? It will not stop instantly. The moment you apply the force, it will not stop. Definitely, it will stop, but it will travel some distance and then it will stop. So assume the object travels some distance. How much is the distance traveled by that object now? So the object has traveled this much distance and then the object stopped. This much is the distance or the displacement of the object before stopping. This much is the displacement of the object before stopping. Okay. So now, how much is the work done by this force is equal to force into displacement. Now here at this position, at the position A, the object was in motion. At position B, the object is now at rest. Okay. So how much is the amount of work done by this force? is equal to the magnitude of the force and the displacement produced in this object. Okay, so let's find out this now. I hope you are getting it class. Please respond. Yes, beta, we are going to calculate. It's not numerical, it's mathem It's uh, uh, symbolical. Okay. Yes, beta, so huh? So you will come to know, we are finding the derivation. So we are just going to use the formula of force. Okay. We are going to use the formula of force. Okay. How much is the force? Chalo. So now let me clear this. Uh -huh. So the let the body of mass M moving with the velocity U. Okay. Let me clear this now. Uh -huh. So we are having the body of mass M moving with the velocity U. It is brought to rest by applying a constant opposing force F. Let A be the, let A be the uniform retardation produced by the force and the body travels a distance S before coming to rest. So these are some information given. What are the, what are the information given? That the body is of mass M. It is moving with the velocity of U. It's the initial velocity now. Then it is brought to rest by applying a constant force. Okay. And due to that, it is having a uniform retardation and the retardation is there, but the object will travel a distance as before coming to rest. So this is our condition. Let's start. Now, how much is the retarding force? So the retarding force F is equal to MA. We know this formula right from 9th standard that F is equal to mass into acceleration. So how much is the retarding force? The retarding force is equal to M. This is the first parameter. Now, the kinetic energy of the body. How much is the kinetic energy of the body? Is equal to the work done by the retarding force. Is equal to the work done by the retarding force. Okay, so you want to see the previous slide. Okay, chalo. let me show you the previous slide then. Now, write down data.
so kinetic energy of the body is equal to the work done by the retarding okay now work done is what f into s so we know how much is the work done huh? this is the work done so here it is w work done by the retarding force w not f please correct it this is not f this is w this is w okay so how much it is it is f into s so now Now, how to calculate the displacement? This is a very interesting part now because how we calculate force? Force is equal to mass into acceleration. But what we have to do? We have to find out how much is the displacement. So we have the initial velocity v, initial velocity u, which is equal to I am going to take it as v because that's the energy, that's the velocity that object possesses at that instant. So we'll take it as v because generally when we are only going to talk about velocity, then we don't take u. Okay, whenever we are having two velocities, the initial and the final, we use u and v. But if I am only talking about the velocity, then we always prefer the v. Okay, and final velocity, how much is the final velocity? The final velocity v is zero. Why it is zero? Because the object will come to rest. Okay. Now, since the acceleration is actually our retardation. Whenever the force is there, we know it accelerates. But here, in this case, the direction of force is opposite. So there is a retardation. So how much is the retardation? So the retardation is equal to, obviously, it, is, it will be minus A. Okay, so now let's find out which relation we are going to use. You remember, we have three equations of motion. We have three equations of motion. Okay, in that I am going to use the last equation of motion that is v square is equal to u square plus 2as. Why I am not using the previous two? Because I don't know the time. Okay, so the time is an unknown factor. So I am not using the first equation v is equal to u plus at because there is a time parameter and I don't know about time in this. And the second parameter is s is equal to ut plus half at square. Again, there is a time parameter. So that's why we are not using it. So, you find that we are having this equation v square is equal to u square plus 2as. Okay, if you further simplify it, you will find out that u is 0. So, oh, sorry, v is 0 because the final velocity is 0. So, 0 is equal to u square. Now, you will find I have not written plus 2as, I have written minus 2as here. Why? Because my acceleration, this is the formula for acceleration. But here, the object is not accelerating, the object is retarding so that's why this a is minus and that's why you will find here it is minus 2a okay so if you rearrange it you will find that we get i sub i shift this minus 2a minus 2as on the left hand side so what we get we get 2as is equal to u square now i will keep s there and the remaining part i will shift it on the right hand side again so i'm changing the subject of the formula and the answer will be s is equal to v square my v square upon 2a so how much is the displacement the displacement is v square upon 2a so this is the magnitude of the displacement and the force is m please copy it i'm giving you one minute for this Copy it. Oh. Now the third part. So, substituting the value of F and S from the equation 1 and 2. We know how much is F? F is equal to M. And how much is S? Just now we calculated. It is v square upon 2a. So kinetic energy F becomes ma, S is equal to v square upon 2a. Now what we will do? We will cut this a and a. This a and this a gets cancelled. Okay. 
So now what we are left with? So see, now we are, here we are left with 1 upon 2. So that's why this 1 by 2 I'm taking outside because of whenever we write any equation, the first thing we have to write is a constant and then we write the variable. So that's why I'm 1 by 2 is written first. So now it is 1 by 2. Then what we are left here? Here we are left with m and here we are left with v square. So what is the kinetic energy that object is possessing? Half m v square. Getting it? Which is equal to half into m is nothing but mass into the square of the velocity. So this is our formula to calculate kinetic energy. This is our formula to calculate kinetic energy. What's the formula? The formula is half m v square. Listen, I'm repeating again. How we calculate the amount of potential energy? We calculate the amount of potential energy in terms, in terms of how much is the work done on bringing that object to that place. The same way, if I want to find out the kinetic energy, I have calculated the kinetic energy again in terms of how much is the work done by that moving object before coming to rest. So the amount of work done by that moving object before coming to rest is half m v square. So how much is the kinetic energy that moving object is possessing is equal to half m v square. Okay, and listen here, the moment the v parameter, the v factor becomes zero, the moment v becomes zero, this entire terms become zero because they all are in multiplication to each other. So if the object is at rest, how much is the kinetic energy it is possessing? It is possessing zero kinetic energy. And again, understand if the object is having no mass, if the object is having no mass, then again, you will find that the energy the object will possess will be zero. So the object, if it is having no mass, it will not possess any kinetic energy as well as potential energy as well because in potential energy also we are having the formula mgh so there is a mass parameter mass parameter over there and the same way we have a mass parameter here as well okay have you copied it beta please copy it Please let me remind you these derivations, these derivations of kinetic energy and potential energy is a part of our syllabus. Okay, so these derivations are not only to make you understand this topic, this can come in the exam for deriving. Okay, so I want all of you to understand it properly and practice it. Beta, this is not only for the sake of understanding. Otherwise, I would have simply said kinetic energy is half mv square, potential energy is mgh, and we must have wind up the concept. Okay, but no, I have derived potential energy, I have derived the kinetic energy formula. Okay, so basically, this is because it is a part of our syllabus. So, this type of questions may be asked. Huh? So, that's why I'm saying be very vigilant on this. Let's start with the next topic now. Now we will talk about the relationship between the kinetic energy and momentum. Let's find out what is the relation between kinetic energy and momentum. Now you will ask me one question that sir why you want to find out a relation between these two terms a kinetic energy and momentum. Okay, Why is it so? Let me show you the formula. So what is the kinetic energy? You will find kinetic energy is half mv square and how much is the momentum? Mass into velocity. So you will find that any object which is having mass as well as velocity possesses kinetic energy? Yes. Possesses momentum? Yes. So any object which is having mass and velocity possesses kinetic energy as well as momentum at the same time. So that's why since any moving object has kinetic energy and momentum let's find out what is the relation means if you are if you know kinetic energy can you find out the momentum or if you know momentum can you find out the kinetic energy 
channel. So let's find out the simple, very short derivation for it. So we know what is momentum. Momentum is mass into velocity. Okay, so I'm changing the subject of formula from P to B. So my B will be P upon M. Okay, so what is the velocity? If you find in terms of momentum, it is P upon M. Now what I will do, I will substitute this value of V is equal to P upon M in the kinetic energy equation. Okay, so what is our kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is half M V square. But what I have done here, instead of V, I have substituted P by M. So I must write here, instead of V, I am substituting P by M. Okay, into bracket square, which is equal to half M, then P square upon V square, because it's a square term. So P square upon P square upon M square. I'm so sorry, P square upon M square. Okay, now what you will find here, you will find that this M and 1m here they will be cancelled okay because it's the same term so it will get cancelled so what we are left with now so we are left with kinetic energy is equal to half p square upon m yes half m is getting cancelled p square upon 1m is left here so kinetic energy is equal to half into p square upon m so what i'm doing this is p square upon half so i'm just multiplying it with m so I get kinetic energy K is equal to P square upon 2M. So this is a formula to calculate the kinetic energy if you know the momentum. You know the momentum? Okay, you want to find out the kinetic energy? So square of the momentum divided by twice of the mass. Square of the momentum divided by twice of the mass. Whatever the relation we get, that is the amount of kinetic energy that object possesses. Okay, then what we will do? So P square, I am changing the subject of the formula of P square. So P square will be 2MK. So this is P square. I want P. So P will be under root 2MK. Means this is our second relation beta. Okay, so you will find here, if I want to find out the kinetic energy and potential energy from each other, I can do it. If I know kinetic energy, I want to find out potential energy. What I will do? I will multiply kinetic energy to mass and then I will double it and I will take the root of that. That will give me how much is the momentum of that object. If I know kinetic energy and if I know how much is the momentum, I can find out the kinetic energy by squaring the momentum divided by twice the mass. So these are the two relations between kinetic energy and momentum. Okay, please write down this. Copy. So let's start with the next topic now. Let's talk about another very important theorem. Okay, and the name of this theorem is work energy. What's the name of this theorem? Ver energy theorem. Very interesting and very simple theorem. Okay. What it says? It says something very fundamental. What we have discussed while deriving the formula of kinetic energy. It says something on the similar lines only. What it says that the work done by a force on a moving body is equal to the increase in its kinetic energy. Very straightforward and very simple. It says that the work done by a force on a moving body is equal to the increase in its kinetic energy. Let me explain this with the help of a very small diagram. Okay, now assume this is an object. Okay, now this object is in motion. This object is in motion. Now this object is in motion and how much energy this object is possessing right now during this state. So assume the energy, the kinetic energy it is possessing. 
the kinetic energy is dispersed the thing is 100 so just for the sake of understanding the concept okay so this is an object which is in motion and it is possessing 100 joule of kinetic energy now because it says the the work done by a force on a moving body so this object is moving now what happened we applied a force on this object what we did we applied the force on this object okay this is the force which is being applied on this object this is of this is the force applied on that object okay now when we apply the force on this object definitely what will happen this object will accelerate now understand the direction of force it is in the direction of motion so it will accelerate and after accelerating due to the application of this force continuously assume the object reaches here the object it has reached here after applying the force the object has reached here after applying the force okay and when it reaches from position a to position b assume this is position a so from a to b when the object is reaching from a to b okay what difference you will find since we are applied the force this object will definitely accelerate and when the object accelerates you know acceleration is rate of change of velocity so definitely when you apply the force its velocity will increase and when it will reach to this point where it is uh, when it reaches to the point b it will have more velocity yeah why because due to the application of the force the object has accelerated so when the object reaches to b it is obviously having more velocity than that of a and what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is half m v square since the velocity has increased its kinetic energy has also increased now so how much is the kinetic energy this object is possessing here at this phase assume the kinetic energy is this object is possessing now is 250 joule clear i hope you are understanding this condition now the amount of kinetic energy this object is possessing due to the application of force is 250 joule so what the theorem says so the theorem says how much is the increase in kinetic energy of this object increase in kinetic energy of this object so you will find the increase in kinetic energy is 150 joule okay so the increase in kinetic energy is 150 joule and it is the amount it is the amount of work done by the force. Clear? Yeah. So this is what the theorem says. So simple and straightforward. It says that the amount of work done by the force is equal to the increase in its kinetic energy. That is how simple this work energy theorem is. It says that the work energy theorem states that the work done by the force. So we are calculating how much is the work done by this force is on a moving body is equal to the increase in its kinetic energy. So before the application of the force, it was having 100 joule. After applying the force, its velocity has increased and that's why its kinetic energy has become 250 joule. So how much is the increase in kinetic energy? 150 joule. So how much is the amount of work done by this force is also 150. Be you so simple okay so this is how the concept of work energy theorem is now what we will do we will find out its derivation part okay so let's assume that's what i whatever i have said is been written now let a body of mass m okay moving with the initial velocity u and when a constant force is applied on the body along its direction of motion it produces an acceleration a and the velocity of the body changes from u to v in moving a distance s okay so this is how these all are the parameters and you will find out that for mass i am using m for initial velocity u final velocity v force f displacement s acceleration a so all the same terms are being used because we are looking at the formula derivation of the formula so what is the force we know f is equal to ma 
Please copy this. Copy. कॉपीड बच्चा लोग सो वर्क डन बाय द फोर्स हाउ मच इज द वर्क डन बाय द फोर्स द वर्क डन बाय द फोर्स इज एफ इन टू एस ओके नाउ हाउ मच इज नाउ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट एफ इज हाउ मच एफ इज इक्वल टू एम ए नाउ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट एस सो वट इज एस सो वी आर यूजिंग द सेम रिलेशन वी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू यू स्क्वायर प्लस Twice is the same relation as what we have done in kinetic energy. Okay, v square is equal to u square plus twice is. Now what I will do? This parameter I will shift it. I will change the subject of the formula to s. So you will find that v square, this u square will come on this side, so it becomes minus u square. This two s will go to the division, so it will be s is equal to v square minus u square upon two. Okay, so now substituting the value of f and s. In the equation W is equal to F S, what we will get? So we will get W is equal to m into a. That is the relation of force into v square minus u square upon two a. Now what we will do? Again, a simple this acceleration here and this acceleration here gets cancelled. So what I am left with? So I am left with one by two first, a constant one by two into m into v square minus u square. Okay, so what I am left with one by two. First, first of all, we take the constant out. So one by two into m into v square minus u square. Let's simplify this. So what we get? So we get half m v square minus half m u square. I am just simplifying this part. I am simplifying this part. Half m v square minus u square. If you simplify it, then you get half m v square minus half m u square. If you look at it. This carefully, it is half m v square. Means v stands for final velocity. So half m v square becomes final kinetic energy, and half m u square. What u stands for initial velocity. So half m u square becomes initial kinetic energy. So w is equal to final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. What it comes out to be? It comes out to be. Half m v square that is final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy, and this is equal to the what is this v k final minus k initial that is kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial, and it is equal to the increase in kinetic energy. So that's what our relation is. What is our relation? That the work done by a force on a moving object is equal to The increase in its kinetic energy. That's our relation. What it says, if you remember the statement of work energy theorem, it says that the work done by a moving object, the work done by the work done by a force on a moving object is equal to the increase in its kinetic energy. So this is what. Our work energy theorem is all about. All of you getting it, beta? Please copy it. Copy it. फिर बस चलो ओके आई विल स्टॉप शेयरिंग दिस सो इट्स नाइन ओ क्लॉक सो वट वी विल डू नाउ वी हैव टू स्टॉप अवर सेशन बट डेफिनेटली टूमोरो वी विल स्टार्ट विथ 
the remaining part of it. Okay.